Well, good morning. You join myself, Martin and Joe behind the camera at Hawcott Lakes in Fairford, which is situated in the Cotswold Water Park. Now, uh, we've come down to this beautiful lake to uh, have a little look around a few of the swims. And what we're looking to do is try and do a little bit of a feature finding video and I'll be armed with my deeper chirp too. So before we uh, get around a few of these swims and try and reveal what's going on underneath the surface, let's have a little bit of a closer look at the kit I'm going to use and we can see what is going on out there. So then, as I mentioned, let's just quickly talk through the sort of hardware that I'm gonna to use to uh, yeah, carry out my sort of feature finding. Now, firstly, I've got my uh, spod rod. Now, I prefer to use my spod rod just because, uh, yeah, it gives me everything that I need to be able to um, utilize it in a few different ways. So obviously I've got it for my feature finding, whether that be a lead or my deeper. I've got it for obviously the spodding up as well, if I'm wanting to apply a little bit of bait. And I've got obviously the braid on there as well. So when I am leading around, I can still feel, you know, little taps of gravel or anything like that, smooth sweeps of silt. It's uh, yeah, it just does many uses in one rod really. So I've got my spod rod and uh, matching spod reel on there loaded with braid. I've also got obviously my uh, deeper chirp plus two. Now, uh, this little ball of goodness is absolutely packed full of features. It's got up to 15 hours battery life. Also weighs around a similar weight as a 3.25 ounce lead. So really, really easy to cast. Another reason why I like to use it on my spod rod. It also has built-in GPS and Wi-Fi connectivity. It has three beam settings, so a wide, a mid, and a narrow, which will allow you to obviously cover a lot of ground under the wide beam, or really fine tune it right through to a, a narrow beam, which is great for finding little pokey holes in the weed where those fish might just be you know, willing to pick up a bait. Not only that, it also has a target separation of one centimeter. So if there's tightly packed sort of shoals of fish swimming around, it will be able to distinguish those fish from as small as sort of, you know, a little gap like that between them. So really, really good for understanding whether there's one, two, or however many fish swimming in and around and under the sonar cone. Not only that, it has a minimum and maximum scanning depth of 15 centimeters right down to 100 meters. So you are gonna get a sonar reading from, you know, really, really shallow water right down to 100 meters, which, yeah, I'd be very surprised if any of you guys fish a, a venue as deep as that. And lastly, the uh, deeper Chirp Plus 2 allows you to create bathymetric maps, uh, which you will be able to look at on your smartphone or on a laptop or your computer at home and understand all of the detail that this has picked up underneath the surface. And like I say, create a map so you know exactly which is the deep end of the lake, the shallow end, or if there's any humps or bumps. So it pulls all that data together and starts to create a map of your lake. So mounted on my spod rod, as you will see there, is the smartphone mount. Now this smartphone mount will fit any type of fishing rod. It's a soft silicon stretchy mount that basically you will take your smartphone and place the corners around the edge of your phone like so. Now we get a lot of questions about these at the shows uh, that we visited this year, just how strong they actually are. Once it's actually mounted to your rod and the phone is on the mount, as you can see, that isn't going anywhere. People are a little bit worried about that going out into the lake, but believe me, I've tested it many, many times. As long as you have these all four corners pulled over your smartphone, yeah, that isn't going to go anywhere. So uh, yeah, I suppose there's no better time now to go and get it out on the lake and see what we can find. So we've just arrived into the first swim and I wanna just show you a uh, pointer really that I see a lot of anglers who use the sonars, um, you know, a common mistake that people often do. And that is the position of the bolt attachment. Now, as you can see, there are three, one, two, and three, top, middle, and bottom. Now, today, if like me, you're out on the bank, you're fishing from, you know, from the shore, from the bank, you want to be using the bottom attachment so screw your bolt directly into the bottom there and that will ensure you get the best scan quality if you are fishing from a boat or using it on your bait boat you want to be using the middle hole attachment 
and if you are fishing from higher ground or a sort of a pier or rocks but just where there's a considerable amount of difference between what you're standing on and the sort of surface of the water you want to be using the top bolt attachment so as i say this will allow you to get the best scan quality possible so firstly then to initiate your sonar and your device there's a couple of steps that you want to follow firstly disable any mobile data or wi-fi assist personally i like to keep mine in airplane mode and then just ensure that the wi-fi is remain switched on just lower your chirp into the margin a good sort of couple of meters out just so it's got enough depth to uh, connect go to your wi-fi settings and connect to the Wi-Fi that is called Deeper Chirp Plus 2. Now this will show up like any network in a cafe, restaurant or at home. Once that is connected, you can then open your Fish Deeper app. The two will be talking to each other and then you can start casting out your sonar. So now the uh, connection has been made. I'm going to give it a, uh, a cast out. Not going to go wanging it out to start with, just sort of steady and often. Just increasing the distance, getting used to the feel of the sonar on your rod. So as you can see there, probably 40, 50 yard cast. That smartphone has uh, stayed exactly where it needs to. For the moment, because this is a swim that uh, I haven't previously fished in, in my handful of visits, just gonna start on a wide beam, um, just to get a sort of general idea for the lay of the land. I think once I've done one retrieve with the wide beam and just seen what it reveals on the lake bed i'll then start to fine tune it with a mid beam and then if i'm finding you know pockets or holes of weed that's uh you know just under the surface i can then reduce it down to the narrow and really start to get to understand if any of them holes in the weed are sort of glowing and look like they could be really good spots for a rig so let's have a little bit of a uh let's have a little bit of a retrieve on this one already just from what I'm seeing, it seems relatively clear. Although the wide beam, it doesn't give you as much detail in regards to sort of like the lake bed as such. This place has been known for its, uh, for its weed, but uh, yeah, it doesn't seem too bad, at least in this room anyway. Dropping off into six foot in this margin. So a little bit deeper as you sort of retrieve the uh, sonar itself. Right, so I'm just going to give it another cast. This time I've switched it up to the mid beam. It is, uh, yeah, it seems relatively clear out there. So I just want to have another little sort of look, but with a mid beam, just to, uh, yeah, see if that is completely true. So I'm just giving it a little bit more of a bit of a welly. Just get used to feeling, like I say, casting out the sonar. It's, uh, you don't want to go cracking off within the first few casts, just get a feel for it and you'll gradually start to build up the distance. So that's gone in now, going anything from sort of 4.8 foot to uh, sort of pushing six foot. It's coming over what looks to be maybe like a weed bed there. Dark purple, I can see the sort of strands of weed sort of reaching up to the surface of the uh, surface layer of the, of the water there. But yeah, it seems very, very up and down. Coming into that sort of deeper, sort of gully in the margin. A few strands of weed here and there. But yeah, it looks like there's a little sort of run, a little sort of gully in front of this swim that goes down to sort of six, six and a half foot. Nice little sort of marginal interception point as they come around this sort of snaggy tree-lined corner. So if I was fishing in this swim, I'd definitely just be having a rod out underneath my tips so just out of purely out of interest i just want to uh see what this sort of gully looks like really on the uh narrow beam so i'm just going to underarm the uh deeper out just a couple of wraps and just pull it over the top of this six foot gully that's pretty much underneath my feet so already it's uh just dropping into that gully now five foot nine and there is absolutely nothing down there it's glowing yellow. I'm pretty sure that if I was to drop a lead down there, it would be going down as hard as under my feet. So now that we've sort of explored this swim, understood the sort of fundamentals and the basic beam settings, we are gonna take a walk up the bank to see if we can find a swim 
that is a, yeah, a little bit more challenging and has uh, yeah, a few more features to put this to good use. So we've come right round to the sort of back end of the lake and uh, it's pretty apparent just from standing in this swim that there are, uh, there are pockets and sort of beds of weed visibly hitting the surface. So what I don't know is obviously what's going on in and around it. So uh, yeah, going to take the same sort of protocol as what we did a little bit further down the bank, initiate the deeper, get it out there and see if we can find those sort of little patrol routes in and around the sort of beds of weed. So uh, this is initiated between sonar and phone. So I'm going to give it a cast out into one of the sort of areas where it looks like there might be some flat spots from the beds of weed. That's gone out absolutely lovely. Now it's just a case of retrieving the sonar and trying to find their little patrol routes between the green stuff. Now where I've cast it, that's pretty much dropped over a good sort of two, two and a half foot of weed. <laughs> so even, even though it's not to the surface, there's a, yeah, two and a half foot of sort of fishing water and then two and a half foot of weed directly underneath it. So not just quite made the uh, surface layer, but uh, yeah. There's definitely an abundance of it down there. So I'm just retrieving it slowly again on that narrow beam because these holes between the weed may not be too big. So I don't want a big wide beam scanning a massive area. I want a uh, real, find a real sort of small pokey hole or sort of little run through that the fish are sort of moving in and around and somewhere that I could present the bait. Now this is looking absolutely bang on. I've just come off the back of that weed. So where I've cast out my deeper originally, there was a good sort of, I don't know, 10, 15, 20 yards maybe. And now it's just hit the money spot. Three, three foot eight, absolutely glowing, really, really clean, and a perfect place that you'd be able to present a bait. I'm just retrieving it ever so slowly, slowly because I can actually see some sort of visible weed on the surface as it's coming forward. And then bang, starts to hit that weed again. And it's actually quite dense because the sonar is struggling to get to the bottom of the lake bed. It's a four foot sort of depth from the very small sort of bits of the lake bed that I can see on the sonar. But it's again, another good two foot of weed. So that spot there, just beyond where my deeper was uh, just a moment ago, is the perfect interception point and the perfect position to be able to drop, you know, a pop-up, a bottom bait, or even a solid bag. There was absolutely nothing on the lake bed that I'd be worrying about presenting any type of rig. Right, so I'm just gonna now try and exactly pinpoint that area. So just stuck the deeper back out at the range now it's a case of uh, retrieving it back over that spot, sticking the marker braid in the clip directly above it, and then swapping sonar for lead and just having a little feel to see what's going on down there. You know, trying to cast a bare lead out amongst this lot or even with a marker float attached. Can be, uh, can be actually quite problematic, just trying to drag you know, a lead and a marker float through the weed. And uh, it's actually quite uh, draining as well, trying to uh, yeah, fight with a lead and a marker float, pulling it through the weed. So there we go, that's the spot. So I've got the clip. I'm just gonna whack the uh, marker braid around the clip. Now that the sonar is just a bobbing over that uh, clear area. I know exactly where it is now. So we have the uh, sonar in. We'll swap it for a lead and we'll flick the lead out there and see what sort of drop we're getting. 
Well then, I've uh, swapped deeper for lead. Now I do this quite often, especially on weedy lakes, because I want to know 100% that this is going down and I'm getting a drop. So I've actually swapped it for a uh, sort of pronged lead. It'll allow me just to understand once it's hit the lake bed, if there is any sort of very, very, very low lying weed down there. So these little prongs will pick up any sort of bottom debris. And uh, yeah, I can adjust and suit my rigs accordingly. So uh, yeah, it's clipped up. Let's get it cast out there and see if we can get that nice hard drop. As I mentioned, we got it in the clip. We are, uh, yeah, just gonna drop this lead out, get it to hit the clip, and that should be going bang on the money. So here we go, flick it out. It's not very far at all. There's the clip dropped. Softish drop, but still enough to uh, enough to feel that lead hit the lake bed. Nice smooth pull through. Got a feeling there is probably a little bit of weed down there, but that lead is moving, and that's the main thing. I've got a uh, I've got a, a smooth retrieve. The lead's just coming back through the various amount of weed beds that's in front of me. But uh, yeah, there's not a lot out there at all. I'm getting a drop. I'm getting a nice smooth sweep of the rod, which indicates that uh, yeah, anything down there isn't really going to impact. You know, a, a pop up, a hinge stiff, something like that. Quite possibly even a solid bag as well. So uh, yeah, I would I would be really really happy fishing that spot in between sort of two banks of weed. Nice little sort of run through patrol for them. There's definitely loads of fish out in front of me. And it's a lot shallower than uh yeah than sort of what's in and around this area as well so the perfect sort of interception point for conditions like this so uh yeah i'd be really really happy with sticking a rig out in that area well i hope that has given you a little bit of an insight just how i use my uh deeper when trying to find sort of features and spots to fish when out in the uh out in the lake now uh this doesn't replace, you know, watercraft, your eyes, your ears, or even a bare lead like I've shown you. Even though I've managed to pinpoint the area, which would have been problematic with a bare lead or even a lead and a marker float, I can run this over the surface, out the way of all that weed out there, knowing that I can get a nice smooth retrieve. It's telling me everything that's below the surface, clipping it up and then finding that sweet spot. Once I've done that, dropping the lead onto the rod and replacing the deeper, allowed me to flick it out, hit the clip, and feel that lead down to fine tune that spot. So yeah, this isn't a, uh, yeah, it isn't a replacement for a good old fashioned sort of lead and a marker, and a marker in a round. I use them both in parallel together, and that allows me to find the best spot out there to present my rigs.